the one that's presented to us is not history. It's, it's all lies. And skeletons that measure between seven and eight feet in height, which for ancient man. There are times when an archeologist will go missing in their hunt for some answers, but most of the time they never turn out with anything. On the other hand, there is a case of an archaeologist who disappeared and ended up finding some giant skeletons. What's even more intriguing is the fact that these skeletons were found under the Grand Canyon. So what happened, and how did the archaeologist even get lost? Let's find out. The Lost Archaeologist On April 5, 1909, the Phoenix, Arizona Gazette published a groundbreaking article that shook the world of archaeology to its core. This article revealed the discovery of an underground city in the Grand Canyon, unlike anything we've ever seen before. The explorer, G.E. Kincaid, stumbled upon this hidden world while rafting on the Colorado River, and what he found was nothing short of breathtaking. Imagine entering a tunnel that stretches over 1,600 meters underground and finding a massive chamber adorned with copper weapons and tablets covered in mysterious hieroglyphic characters. But the most astonishing find of all was the discovery of mummified bodies, none of which were less than 2.74 meters tall, all wrapped in dark linen. Could this be the remnants of a lost civilization that possessed advanced engineering skills? And what about the similarities between the hieroglyphic characters found in the Grand Canyon and those found in Egypt? Despite the Smithsonian Institute's denial of any knowledge of this discovery, the mystery of the giant skeletons in the Grand Canyon remains unsolved. It is legend, then, that the team, influenced by a member who is the grandfather of the writer, discovers the site, and instead of being relocated to the Smithsonian as they had planned, is ordered to seal it and never return. This did not deter their first trip into the cavern. In order to protect the Grand Canyon site from a group that was known to be funded by the Smithsonian, Kincaid hires a guerrilla-style expedition team to aid him in his investigation of the finding and possibly reveal the secret to the public. Shortly afterward, he died of mysterious causes and the truth behind his findings was veiled. This narrative description follows the expedition of a long-lost archaeologist, Kincaid, who ventured into the Grand Canyon, seeking the secret hidden cavern rumored to hold ancient Egyptian artifacts. What he discovered instead, but not publicized, was what Kincaid described as the underground citadel of the Grand Canyon. This massive underground cavern system is reported to be the true location of the site of Egypt and the resting place of ancient relics. Dr. Kincaid was the first person since the Egyptians to discover a culture and language in the Grand Canyon. Later in life, Kincaid was awarded a Grand Canyon National Monument contract, and the Secretary of the Interior personally congratulated him for his achievement, which was no small matter. He was given unlimited funding and the use of the most modern equipment to aid his research. This is where the lesser-known yet amazing story of the Kincaid discovery begins. The caves are off-limits to all but government-sponsored explorers. A close friend of the Smith family took a three-day journey into the caverns through a lower-floor entrance that connected to the caverns. He claimed it was a very long and strenuous hike, but after three days, they reached an area right near the Grand Canyon National Park underground Supai. The government-sponsored explorer then took him to Kincaid's cave, and he said he was nowhere near the caves he had just come from. After several months of surveying and inspections, he came upon one of the largest underground caverns in the Grand Canyon. But to his surprise, it was blocked by a cave-in within the cave. He and his team of explorers shoveled for an entire day to get the rocks and rubble out of the way. After several hours of laying planks into the cave to make a pathway down for easy access, they finally descended into the cavern. This whole expedition was pretty interesting as it was, given that this was unnoticed. However, it is what they found in this cave that left everyone surprised. But what about the giant skeletons? Keep watching to learn more about them. It is no accident that the Grand Canyon has been the focus of the attention of both the learned and unlearned in the quest for lost cities and the civilizations that may have produced them. The vastness of the area and the great depth of the bed of the Colorado River have long suggested that this might be an excellent place to look for some of the more anciently lost cities of man. Material from many of the earlier periods of man's history might well be exposed in the walls of the canyon 
or in the side canyons as a result of the greatly disturbed condition of the region's geology. It is said, for example, that in the early days the miners of the Hualapai and other Indian tribes who lived along the canyon's rim used to find what appeared to be prehistoric implements and other artifacts in great quantities in the cave of the Coconino Sandstone. One of the best places in the country to look for evidence of very early man is in the gravel and talus deposits left by the now-vanished streams high above the canyon floor. Here, it would not be at all surprising to find tools or perhaps even the remains of the pits and habitations of some of the first immigrants who came to the New World from Siberia. But alas, although numerous individual archaeological finds are of considerable interest from all periods of man's history, no large-scale archaeological work has ever been carried out in the Grand Canyon region, and herein lies a notable void in the history of canyon science. The Astonishing Findings Unveiling the Giant Skeletons Highly contrasting evidence will undoubtedly be provided that the identity of the ancient giants and the majority of this heading may not be essentially recognized. The best thing to remember is that not a grave robbery and seizure of giant skeletons have ever been made a best-in-class media event. Instead, these have come to light erratically by the broader society. Another peculiar detail discovered about the skeletons is the double line of teeth upper and lower. The double-rowed teeth appear to be consistent in all the skeletons found, but it is not recognized if this is a result of multiple individuals or if it was common for the giants. What was handy, moreover, were Egyptian hieroglyphics, which recorded the giants who had once wandered on Earth. These giants are described as being aggressive and ignorant, taking whatever they wish by force. Data on uncovered giant skeletons is plentiful, Alleged Goliath skeletons have been revealed on all of the ten islands. In the course of recent years, various giant-sized human skeletons have been revealed inside the jungle or in various waterway associations. Ranging in size from 7 feet to a grand-sized 18 feet tall, the outcome of these discoveries has created a colossal amount of enthusiasm amongst the overall population and scholarly groups. In Chapter 6, for example, Michael Hearns from New Zealand describes his experiences with local giants and his research into giant DNA. The early Polynesian inhabitants of New Zealand were linked with extinguishing giants, as per legends carried out by the Maori people. In a more recent account, Mr. Hearns was hunted down by what he refers to as covert government external security after writing a book on the same topic. A farmer supposedly showed Hearns remains that belonged to a giant, and he set up arrangements for acquiring the bones, though they were taken before he could obtain them. DNA testing of the bones was prevented, and the remains were never recovered. A very strange interview between Michael Hearns and a private investigator hired to look into the theft can be found on his website. This account typifies the experiences relayed by various researchers once they have made significant progress in finding the remnants and truths about these beings. This group of giants has a history. It is a compilation of various essays by Steve Quayle, aiming to provide a single resource for the ongoing search for ancient man. This book serves as an index into the minds of different ancient man researchers, and the author's findings are truly intriguing. Curve have indicated that the early giants had several features that were unusual and not similar to what is seen in modern, normal-sized humans. The skeletal records and XP of these beings suggest that various parts of their anatomy and physiology were different. A summary of some of the unique findings includes double-row teeth found in Manchester, Kentucky. A large skull with double dentition in both upper and lower jaws was reported. In addition, another maxilla and several jaw bones with double dentition were recorded in the central part of the state. Twenty miles south of Alton, Missouri, another double maxilla and two jaw bones with double-row teeth were found. Similar findings were recorded in Ohio and Indiana, and the teeth of one jaw were reported to be quadruple. A maxilla with unusually large molars and double-row teeth was found in Craig Mound, Oklahoma. During our recent tour of the United States, we were shown an unusually large human jaw bone that was found in Charleston, West Virginia. This jaw has two rows of teeth and an extra set of wisdom teeth, which is an example of hyper-elevation. Gimbutas has linked the double-rowed teeth with the Neanderthals, but it is a characteristic that was preserved by some of the early giant tribes. 2. 
Occipital bun. This is a distinctive lump on the back of the skull caused by enlargement of the cerebrum. It was a characteristic of Neanderthals and Homo erectus, and is not found in Homo sapiens. The occipital bun was recently found in an 8 to 2 inches skeleton near Edinburgh, Texas. This individual also had six fingers and six toes. He had been buried with a small child and shell beads that indicated an archaic burial ritual. For a long time, the academic community has been aware of the numerous skeletons found throughout North America that are over three meters in length. Many of these skeletons were sent to the Smithsonian Institution by prominent field archaeologists employed by such organizations as eugenist Alish Herdlicka. However, in the time period since the late 1950s, it is now known that these skeletons were systematically destroyed and that a cover-up took place that has etched itself into the historical record of archaeology. It is of particular interest that this era corresponds with the Smithsonian's policy regarding the origins of different groups of people. At the time, it was the declared belief of the institution that the native peoples of the Americas had only arrived in the region approximately 13,000 years ago. Any evidence to the contrary of this was refuted in favor of adhering to the established model. Due to this near century of prejudice, many of the giant skeletons found were either wrongly dated or ignored completely in the context of reports and literature. This is not the only circumstance encountered. Numerous accounts of giant skeletal remains are found in mounds and subterranean caverns. Those loyal hands of the establishment archaeologists and researchers have often hidden the giant remains. This is unfortunate, as it means that point-of-view comparison studies are difficult to accumulate. Nevertheless, the information that is available gives a very solid case for the real existence of giants. Typically, adult male Homo sapiens remains are 60 to 70 inches in length. Professor Vine Deloria spearheaded a team that had an encounter in a subterranean cavern in the Grand Canyon in 1980 with the Grand Canyon National Park personnel. While the teams were investigating a reported archaeological find in an area that was closed off to the general public by an iron gate, a close brush with death was experienced when tons of material were dumped into the hole where the team was inspecting the ruins. This was an apparent effort to seal off the teasers and prevent any further investigation. Professor Deloria and his team are fortunate to be alive today as they crawled through the debris and eventually found the gate had been opened. With little disregard for their lives and disregard for the tradition of secrecy surrounding the presence of any unusual archaeological finds, the team continued with their spelunking and found a good deal of knowledge on what hides in the caverns of the Grand Canyon. Among the finds were the remains of a 12-foot male, a human-like being, if you will, whose remains measured 144 inches in length, which was larger and broader than a typical Homo sapiens remains. This case alone is a basis for comparison, but there is much more thorough information. An underground city in Turkey called Derin Kuyu is said to have once been a refuge for giants in ancient times. These remains of the burly giants are said to be twice as large as typical human remains, with double rows of upper and lower incisors of the jaw. The genetic evidence indicates that the giant phenotype had a very long existence in North America, possibly spanning over 10,000 years into the modern era. It seems obvious that if there was morphological continuity in any trait, it was in North American Indian population size, especially in the same region, given the known extent of size increase in the lineage of modern man even into recent times. It is only logical to assume that many giant traits have persisted up until as recently as several centuries ago. Therefore, it cannot be a priori assumed that any unusually large skeletal remains are from a chronologically concurrent racial or social group unless it can be first demonstrated with valid morphological continuity arguments. It is folly to try to explain giant remains as being from some non-native source based upon the historical assumption that all native tribes in the Americas were of recent Asian descent. Skeletal remains from at least 60 humans have been discovered repeatedly, dating back to early man in North America. All of these remains are incredibly fragmentary. It is obvious that many of these would not be distinguishable from modern man by morphological assessment. Therefore, all are assumed to be modern, even within the standard radiocarbon dating range. This practice artificially skews the data, reducing the suspected age of more anomalous remains. 
Therefore, there has been no attempt to objectively and systematically examine the possible morphological distinctions between ancient and modern Native American skeletal remains. This situation remains so long as it is not rectified with a systematic analysis of all ancient remains. This debilitating ambiguity will persist. The human skeleton is similar to the skeletons of other primates, and in some detail, the different species of primates resemble one another to a great extent. In fact, people and other primates are so similar that there is a widespread belief among scientists that humans and other primates must be related in some way to a common ancestor. The specific differences in each primate species are often used to graph the evolutionary history of that species. The human skeleton is unique among mammals. It has an S-shaped spine, an adaptation for bipedal locomotion. The head is directly connected to the spine, and the body's center of gravity is directly above the legs. The knee joint is also uniquely constructed, with a nearly straight leg. These characteristics are often what are looked for in the skeletal remains of pre-humans and humans alike. With such a wide array of primate skeletons to compare with, anthropologists know exactly what to look for in terms of the transition from pre-human to human. By comparing the giant skeletal remains found in the Grand Canyon with those of both modern humans and other known primates, we can start to see incongruities in evolution. If the giants are an ancestor of Homo sapiens, then it must be reasoned that Homo sapiens evolved from them. The problem lies in the fact that the skeletal anatomy of Homo sapiens is closer to modern primates than it is to the giants found in the canyon, anatomically. The giants are closer to the now extinct Australopithecus than they are to modern man. This creates a hole in the theory of human evolution. If the giants are not another species of primate, but rather an earlier attempt at the human species, there should be evidence to support their resemblances to modern man. The knee joint is an especially viable tool in deciphering a hominid's mode of locomotion, and upon comparing the giant knee joints to those of modern man, the differences are substantial. The S-shaped joint connecting to the femur is not nearly as defined, indicating the giant's method of walking was not truly bipedal. It can be concluded through this comparison that the giants found in the Grand Canyon were not recent ancestors of modern man. Radiocarbon dating offers a means of placing the significant discoveries made in the Grand Canyon in the wider context of North American archaeology. It is difficult to assign a date to the skeletons, since they were discovered in an undocumented investigation in the early 20th century. The only indication of a relative date comes from a report by a reputable theosophist who stated that they were in a cave found high above the Colorado River. The date of such an occupation is unknown, so that the skeletons could be proto-historic or even early historic. The closure of the cave entrance by a landslide is thought to be the reason for the presence of human remains in an otherwise undisturbed location. This suggests that the cave was sealed off from external influences, preserving the remains and artifacts found inside. The potential discovery of untouched archaeological sites presents an intriguing opportunity for researchers to gain valuable knowledge about ancient civilizations and societies. The landslide's obstruction of the cave entrance has posed challenges in confirming this theory and conducting comprehensive research. This blockage has made it difficult to access the cave, which has hindered the ability to conduct thorough investigations and verify the hypothesis. Therefore, the lack of access to the cave due to the landslide has left many questions unanswered, making it a fascinating topic for further study and exploration. If this were the case and not a vindication of the lost tribe theory, it would seem that the earlier the date, the more useful it would be in shedding light on the presence of a race of giants in the Americas. Radiocarbon dating is, however, fraught with methodological problems when applied to the Grand Canyon. This is owing to the generally arid environment, where preservation is poor, and to the reliance on charcoal for the date, which is not associated with the skeletal material. The use of dates with unclear provenance and context is limited when attempting to reconstruct the society that the giants that have been discovered represent. At best, it could confirm that they were prehistoric and add weight to the dissimilarity between their date and that of the Havasupai, who were in recorded history and virtually the only extant tribe at the time of European contact. The prevailing biological viewpoint is that, with the possible exception of the pituitary gland being diseased, there is no plausible genetic mechanism for humans to grow to such an enormous size. 
This is based on the fact that gigantism only occurs in humans due to dysfunction of the pituitary gland, which causes over-secretion of growth hormone, and that humans have an inherent biological fail-safe against ever-increasing size called the square cube law. If a human were to double in height, his cross-sectional area, which provides the structural support for his mass, would increase fourfold, and his body mass would increase eightfold. This changes the stress on the bones and organs, requiring them to be significantly stronger and more massive. It only takes a doubling in height to produce eight times the stress, which can be fatal. And this is why there are no humans or animals on Earth that are significantly larger than the usual maximum for the species. Unfortunately, ancient DNA studies are lacking for giant skeletal remains. Due to the difficulties in obtaining a DNA sample combined with the fact that DNA has a half-life of around 500 years, it is unlikely that an ancient DNA study will ever occur. The genetic origins of the giant skeletal remains found in the Grand Canyon may forever remain a mystery. The ancient civilization beneath the Grand Canyon. The civilization it is suggested to possess had a mysterious origin. Scott explains his travels to the Havasupai Indians at the Grand Canyon, who have a legend that they are descended from the race of humanoids that had built an enormous city inside the canyon. An older man told Scott that the inhabitants of the city had used the canyon walls to shield themselves from a great flood that was to come. They were using caves to escape to safety when the ground shook and a large section of the canyon wall broke away. The floodwaters then came pouring into the city and were capped off by a large portion of the ocean dumping into the area. The Indians say the event happened simply a thousand years ago. In addition to the legend of man, Scott discovered Egyptian artifacts in numerous caves atop the cliffs in the canyon. He also visited an area behind the 50-foot falls where the delta of the Little Colorado spreads out, and this delta is about 500 feet higher than the riverbed and it is solidly choked up with debris from some ancient and unknown disaster. This led Scott to postulate that the civilization had originated in Mu, as he did in his next book on the subject. For nearly half our lifetimes, we have imagined obtaining a high-resolution photograph of a site the size of the Grand Canyon. With the addition of helicopter and satellite technology, modern man can now take pictures of canyon mouths, rims, temples, and other sites of interest from virtually all angles to record and analyze their architecture accurately. Additionally, several newly developed remote sensing techniques are being used to survey otherwise inaccessible locales or regions that are too large to study by invasive field methods. High-tech devices such as LIDAR, light detection, and ranging can produce three-dimensional maps of terrain. Magnetometry can uncover subsurface architectural remains by measuring local variations in the Earth's magnetic field. Using electromagnetic and ground-penetrating radar can help detect and visualize structures such as walls, pathways, and water management systems that have been buried under layers of debris for hundreds of years. These technologies have the potential to reveal hidden archaeological features without the necessity of extensive excavation, offering valuable insights into ancient civilizations. Finally, the use of infrared and soil chemistry analysis can help determine how the environment has changed over time due to human activity. The data collected by these new methods is providing astonishing insights into the canyon's past. For example, recent surveys of the North Rim have shown that it is far more heavily settled than previously thought. The data also show how the Anasazi, who once occupied the Inner Gorge, organized their buildings. The precise construction of the Pueblo at Lomaki, for instance, was recently discovered through a combination of excavation and remote sensing. At the same site, pollen cores indicate that an agricultural terrace was rapidly constructed in an effort to grow crops in a new environment. Overall, technological data greatly complements the field-based study of the canyon, providing a more complete understanding of its complex history. Unfortunately, to Skinwalker's chagrin, Kincaid's cave is only a story, and little to no effort has ever been made to relocate it by serious archaeologists. The tale of the cave is akin to the canyon's ever-present mysteries. It is an invitation for individual interpretation and speculation, balancing on the verge of history and myth. In this regard, there is no clear resolution for Kincaid or his Grand Canyon. The enigma of the canyon will endure, serving as a reminder of the vast, untold stories that lie within its depths. The fascination and untapped exploration possibilities within the massive Colorado River Canyon remain constant as we unearth more and more of the Grand Canyon's hidden past year after year.
There are countless possibilities concealed inside the canyon's depths, and its mystery will always be a compelling story. As we continue to explore the rich past of the canyon, we can be confident that this anecdote will stand as a tribute to its mystery and the unwavering possibility of finding new information within the massive chasm that the Colorado River has carved out. The Legacy of the Lost Archaeologist after Kincaid's intriguing yet disputed discovery of the cave, the contentions surrounding the Grand Canyon only grew more and more convoluted. Disregarding any unempirical evidence for ancient Egyptian transoceanic diffusion is difficult. Over the years, stories have begun to layer on top of Kincaid's original allegation, claiming the Smithsonian was involved in a grand cover-up of a vastly intricate tunnel system and had desecrated the cave's findings. Different tribes have also tried to lay claim to the canyon's ancient dwellers, heightening the dispute and clouding the truth beneath a fog of outrageous propositions. Though these postulations can hardly attest to the informed and conventional wisdom of the archaeological community, they still reveal the impact Kincaid's find had in capturing the public's curiosity and driving a need to understand the mysteries of the past. Like the canyon, Kincaid's story is a specter of uncharted potential. His enigmatic tale has spawned innumerable versions and implications and refuses to be buried in obscurity beneath the desert sands. The discovery of giant skeletons in the Grand Canyon has captured the public's imagination and sparked media attention like no other. The idea of these huge creatures that originally roamed the globe fascinates us now. Imagine the size of these giants. They would have been twice as tall as the average person. And their strength? It's hard even to fathom. The media has been all over this story, with headlines like Giant Skeletons Found in Grand Canyon, Fact or Fiction, and Uncovering the Mystery of the Grand Canyon Giants. It's a topic that has people talking and wondering what other secrets the Grand Canyon might be hiding. And let's not forget about the conspiracy theories that have emerged. Some people believe that the Smithsonian Institution is hiding the truth about the giant skeletons, while others think that they are evidence of extraterrestrial life. While there is no concrete scientific evidence to support the existence of such skeletons, there are ongoing research and exploration efforts related to ancient civilizations and human remains found in the Grand Canyon area. One such example is Lovelock Cave, located in Nevada, which has been the subject of much interest and speculation. In the early 20th century, miners discovered artifacts and human remains in the cave, including what some believed to be giant skeletons. A more recent study indicates that business people hoping to draw travelers may have improved the so-called giant view of these skeletons. Despite this, Lovelock Cave remains an important archaeological site, with a wealth of unique artifacts and well-preserved remains that provide valuable insights into life in the Great Basin. Ongoing research and exploration efforts continue to uncover new information about the cave and its history, contributing to our understanding of ancient civilizations and human habitation in the region. While the existence of giant skeletons in the Grand Canyon remains a topic of debate and speculation, there is no denying the importance of ongoing research and exploration efforts in the region. As we continue to uncover new information and insights, the mysteries of the Grand Canyon's past will continue to captivate and intrigue us for years to come. And there you have it. If you have enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe for future content. See you next time.